You have not officially arrived to Ecuador if you have not eaten this dish. Lo más tradicional de esta tierra y callejera a la vez. I'm Ace. I'm Roy. And today we're going to take you on an Ecuador street food tour. Vamos a ver lo que es calidad y precio, una breve historia de ciertos platos y qué tan típico es. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's go. So right now we're here in Picuasa, which is actually a parish of Puerto Viejo. In this occasion, we're going to try what would be the ceviche, but it has a special touch, which would be with this. This is a cream of maní that is put on the ceviche, but you can only find it here, in Picuasa. The thing about ceviche is that when you eat ceviche, typically it always has onion, it has fish, it has cilantro and the liquid itself. So it's basically a fish soup that's cold. You typically add the chifle in order to make it tastier. But here it's special because of this, the whole peanut butter situation. So we're gonna try this right now. I haven't eaten it with peanut butter, but I know ceviche itself is one of the best dishes in Ecuador. Not just Puerto Vieja, but in Ecuador, ceviche is amazing. People love it. It's a typical breakfast dish. What really distinguishes ceviche from different soups is the fact that it's cold. You can, of course, like I said, you can add some extra condiments aside from the peanut butter. Most people tend to add the ketchup and the mustard. Typically more ketchup than mustard. Here they already added some for me, but we're going to try it out now. We're gonna try peanut butter. This man wants me to add more peanut butter. For example, to me, there's still some mustard here. His is only prepared with mustard. Mine has ketchup and mustard and the peanut butter. And he's going to put peanut butter in his as well. I'm going to add some more ketchup. This is sacrilege. We also have some orange juice, and it even has the logo of the place. This place is called El Especial, located in Picuasa. With the chifle, there are two types of people. The one who likes to throw it all together, or as it is, it's good in the bathroom. Or the one who throws it all together. In my opinion, it's very uncommon to see someone who just throws the chifle inside, the plantain chips, inside of the, the ceviche or the encebollado, because of course there's also encebollado. But um, there are people who just throw in the plantain chips like that. Preferably everyone, what they do, well, I like to open the bag a little bit so it doesn't pop. And then I crunch it up a bit. And then I add it into my soup. Lo extraño para mí es que nadie quiere aceptar que el ceviche y el cebollado son sopas. Si lo internacionalizas, lo tienes que poner como sopa. Es lo que hacen los locales en Galápagos. Lo ponen como sopa. Pero te especifican abajo qué es lo que traen. Ah, tú dices, ah, ya, es un cebollado. Al local, donde tú le dices una sopa, te dicen, no, no es una sopa. It's the weirdest thing. All right, let's give it a try. Good. If you notice, it's got a lot of pieces of fish on the inside. What type of pescado is this? Puede ser algo acora, guajú o picudo. Amiga, una preguntita. ¿Qué pescado es? Ah, mira, es picudo. Mejor. Gracias. Before, most places didn't have the peanut butter, like like Rory said. Peanut butter is a special thing to, to Picuasa and places like Hipihapa. But nowadays, there are some places that because it's so popular and it's so good, that they started implementing having the peanut butter as an option that you can add onto your, your ceviche. Okay, so what we have here is something a little bit special. This is called cevipan. Like literally, it's like jamming the ceviche inside of the bread. Te recomiendo que le pongas esto. You can prepare it similarly to your ceviche. And of course we're going to put... Alright, let's give it a shot. Come, 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 come. 
because of the ketchup, kind of sweet, but it's really good. The fun variation of this is um, there are some schools, they sell what's called cevichifle, which is almost the same thing as this. You see a bag full of chifle and you put ceviche in it. It's also really good, but you know, it's kind of like eating it in the plate, just instead of a plate, you eat it in a bag. Eso sí, lo he visto. Cuando estaba en la escuela lo, lo vendían. Es bastante común. Mm -hmm. La gente de este comedio tiene que contar una historia de, sí, de cuando, tus tiempos en, yo, en la escuela. Cuando yo estuve en la marina <laughs> y fui capitán. Subí el barco. It was good. Obviously the orange juice. Fondo, 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 fondo. It's orange juice. And it doesn't have a lot of sugar. Because it doesn't taste sweet. So it's really good. Yeah. A mí me da una de sandía. ¿Tú de qué quieres? ¿Hay limón? Sí, hay limón. Limón, entonces. Esto sí, esto sí es de bien, bien de casa, bien, bien, bobola, antiguo. Talk to us. Es una de las cosas más callejeras que te puedes encontrar. Y aún existe. Snow cone. Sí, más o menos. Digamos que sí. Pero el granizado, tú sabes, pues tiene. Claro. El hielo hasta acá arriba y es el saborizante, este es artificial. Esto no, porque este es 100% natural. Y es lo que lo hace diferente. Ahora vamos a ver qué hay en el centro de la ciudad de Puerto Viejo. And you'll have to excuse us if you hear, for example, the bus that just passed or any cars that pass by because this is a very well-known street here in Puerto Viejo known as the Avenida Manaví. Very loud, a lot of cars pass by. We're here to try something that is called Bolón. And if you noticed, there are two different Bolones. Mine is the Bolón, the Chicharrón. Papo! El mío es mixto, así de And now we also have a little bit of extra I also got these patacones, which are very commonly eaten in breakfast. And he got... Tortitas de plátano. Tortita de plátano with cheese. I've already eaten bolón de chicharrón a lot, but it's really good. And depending on where you go, it can be even better. Like you can see here, there's big chunks of chicharrón, which make it just that much tastier. Also, we've got these drinks. Roddy has... Quaker. Quaker is quaker. Yeah, just quaker. Which makes me think of uh, Novoa. Yes. Quaker Novoa. Quaker is quaker. Quaker is quaker. <laughs> and I got more orange juice because I love orange juice. Otra vez. Aunque esto de aquí por lo general se debería de acompañar con una taza de café o de leche de chocolate. Provecho. Yes, right. Provecho. Eso también es algo muy común. Claro que una porción más pequeña. Lo venden en las escuelas. Mm. Another thing also about bolón is that this is normally just a meal on its own. Like today, because of the purpose of the video, you're going to see us eating a lot of food and it's going to be very filling. This bolón by itself, it would be more than enough. You'd be done with just by eating one of these. Anything with plantain in it, heavy food. So me combining it with these, pretty crazy. But oh so good. Pero te puedes preguntar por qué es pesada. Porque esto se puede decir que es un desayuno de campo. Mm. Necesitan desayunar fuerte, pesado, por lo que ellos aprovechan la mañana y gastan bastante energía. Necesitan algo que no se les vaya tan rápido, que les mantenga el estómago lleno. Eso y que también los desayunos allá tienen que llevar 100% arroz. Como te digo, necesitan algo pesado. Chicharrón is really something I like to eat, even if it's just by itself. Like they're really good, really, really good. No te olvides que hay más versiones de de estos bolones. Tienes con longaniza, con camarón, mixto de longaniza con camarón, acompañados con bistec de carne, pescado, costillas. Puedes juntarlo con lo que sea. Con todo lo que hemos comido, no voy a llegar a almorzar. Yo sé que uno llegamos a lo fuerte. No creo que lleguemos. Te doy la mitad para que pruebes. No, no, no jalo. Te doy la parte más pequeña. No. Come. Que te vayan los patacones, güey. I like that it's crunchy.
Y esa es la cara de alguien que está sufriendo por comer plato, ¿no? Aún te falta mucho, mi joven padre, weón. A la bien, Yoda. Bueno, ya que querer compartir. I'm like on the brink of exploding. Okay, maybe not so much, but I am very much satiated. So the thing with these patacones, it's basically like grabbing the plantain. You chop it up, you squish it, and then you fry it. Hay gente que los pone a remojar con sal una vez después de que los aplasta y los vuelve a freír. Es para que queden más dorados, más Crunchy. La verdad que quedan demasiado deliciosos. Manabi Secrets. So, as you uh, probably noticed, this is day two uh, of our food tour. And uh, we're back with Roddy. Came to pick him up. Esta aventura continúa. It does. But um, the food from yesterday, well, the day before yesterday actually, it's very heavy, even though it is. Breakfast, even though it's a street food, it's a very heavy food. Lo que pasa es que a pesar de que los desayunos deben ser ligeros, acá es todo lo contrario. Son desayunos para campeones. Son pesados. Today we're going to continue. We're going to finish it off and try to eat as many foods as possible, even going into the nighttime. So, hope you're ready for that. Let's go! Nuestra primera parada del día de hoy sería aquí comiendo el sándwich más simple que te puedes encontrar en la calle. Estamos aquí en este lugar que se llama El Tío, que justamente se encuentra en lo que vendría a ser este, un puesto de carreta. Como era habitualmente visto hace unos 10 hasta hace 5 años más o menos. Mira, el pan es como un estilo bagué, estilo bagué. Primero va la lechuguita. Y ahí salsa parrillera. Y ahí cebollita curtida. Se curte el día anterior. Y ahí lo piden mixto. Vale lo mismo. Se le pone el lomo de chancho. Ahumado al barril. Y pollito también ahumado. We're going to have these sandwiches, which are a very common thing to have in most places here in Ecuador, in the city. It's a very common street food that you'll see at festivals, outside of schools, just when you're walking around. We're going to give this specific one a shot because obviously you can find it in different places, but we found a cart and wanted to give it a try. Uh, let's see. Mm. It's what you would expect out of a chicken sandwich because mine is chicken. Roddy chose um, pork. What really distinguishes it from a normal chicken sandwich, and I think that's what's going to distinguish most products, is the type of sauce that they put on top of it. In this case, the mayonnaise that you put on top of it, which, like I've talked about before in previous videos, mayonnaise is a very, very common condiment for most foods here in Ecuador. And in this case, it's really good. And we also have this juice, which is actually a tea, because the guy actually, he told us that the way that he prepares his juice is with like tea, with lemon or lime for people in the States. And he also puts in this thing called panela, which is basically a type of a sweetener that it comes from the sugar cane. So it's really good, it's really sweet and supposedly not as unhealthy as throwing in a whole bunch of sugar in it. So yeah. Nah, aquí poniendo la gasofa. Para movilizarse y sin gasofa, no se puede. Five dollars of gasoline. Remember that here that there's service, like they fill up the tank for you, you don't have to fill it up yourself. Hold up, I gotta pay.
You have not officially arrived to Ecuador if you have not eaten this dish. Ah, el cebollado. Estamos aquí. En el local de El Colorado, ubicado atrás de Reina y Camino, cerca del terminal terrestre de aquí de la ciudad de Puerto Viejo. Y bueno, nos encontramos en esta estación con una de las mejores sopas marineras en el mundo. In the world, not just Ecuador, in the world. Esto sí es un desayuno totalmente tradicional, a pesar de que digan que nació en Guayaquil, pues se expandió a lo, en todo el Ecuador. Y pues es un desayuno bastante pesado que te va a cargar lleno todo el día. A degustar se ha dicho. Yes, but first I need to tell you how to prepare your encebollado because you could eat it as is and I always recommend that before you eat it completely, you try it first. You give it a try? God, that's good. That's so good. But you do normally add in condiments. A little bit of oil, a little bit of pepper, and a tiny bit of lemon. But remember, the thing about lemon is that you don't add a lot of it because if you add too much lemon, it's kind of like a sign that the encebollado wasn't good. Sacrilegio, sacrilegio. Yes, sacrilegio. And of course, the finishing touch, a bag or two, or for some people, three, of chifle. One of the things I love about encebollado, aside from the fact that it's so good, is how cheap it is. You can get a small one at $1.50, a big one at $2, and if, if you want them to go, you can literally get them at $2, $3, and $3.50 if you want a big one. And you always get a mint after you finish. Muchas gracias. So now we're here and we have the special, lovely pan de almidón and tortilla de maíz. Yes. These are also commonly used as breakfast as well as for dinner. And I'm personally going to eat the pan de almidón because it is one of my favorite foods. And as you could imagine, it's made from what is called almidón here. ¿Por qué hay pan de almidón y pan de yuca? No es lo mismo. Lo que pasa es que el pan de yuca, tú tienes que dejar fermentar la yuca para que tenga un sabor diferente. El pan de almidón, como dice netamente eh, lo dice el nombre, es almidón. Es el proceso de la yuca, la dejan secar y todo, o la dejan remojar y todo lo que este, queda arriba, pues es el almidón con lo que se hace esto. Mm. Y el sabor es totalmente diferente. Aquí tú no sientes el sabor a yuca. Y es netamente almidón. Tell us about tortilla. Tortilla de maíz. También proveniente del campo, todo esto proveniente del campo. Se puede acompañar tanto en el desayuno como en la merienda eh, y se lo suele acompañar con una taza de café o un jarro de leche con chocolate. Cualquiera de las opciones es muy válida. También tiene su otra versión que también es con yuca. Puedes pedir las de queso o de chicharrón. Al igual que la de, de maíz, también es, puedes pedir la de queso o chicharrón. We're like done. We're, this is the last time you're going to see us in the morning. You'll see us again at night because these foods, individually, you could eat one or two, maybe even three or more. But after you accumulate them, it's too much. Demasiado comer esto, o sea, más que unos tres, cuatro. Es más, acabo de ver algo que también se puede pedir. Ya vuelvo, déjame alcanzarlo. Esto de aquí. Pensé que te estabas reportando. No, 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 vi algo muy inusual que es esto. Esto es el famoso, bueno, que ensalada de frutas se lo suele llamar o también comi bebe. Eh, Eat and drink. Ajá. Es muy económico, también se lo suele considerar un desayuno bastante ligero. Pues, eh, a base de fruta. Es una ensalada de frutas. Te puedes tranquilamente tener melón, papaya, sandía. sandía y unas que otras frutas por ahí, piña. Así que te doy el honor para que lo pruebes. 
tortilla. Inside of the pan de almidón. Cheesy. I love this so much. It leaves your fingers pretty dusty. Esto es algo inusual. Por lo general, las tortillas de maíz suelen ser bastante secas. Es como que algo arenoso, como que te metes a la boca a comer, ¿no? <laughs> y esto no. Esto está bastante... con bastante textura y suave. Parece como si fuera de plátano, pero no es. Ah. Este quedó de, de maravilla. It's good. Now that we're done with this, I'm just gonna finish this off in a bit. We'll see you later tonight. So we're back and this time it is, as you could probably tell, nighttime and we're here at a very special place for me. Special because it did not exist before and now that it does exist, man, this is amazing. This is what my friend here likes to call Macacos Tacos and I'll let him explain how did you make this? Como empieza Macaco, yo antes trabajaba en una empresa la cual tuvieron que hacer un pequeño recorte personal en el cual me había afectado yo. ¿Qué tenía en mente? No quedarme parado, no quedarme, quedarme sin el dinero. Entonces empecé con un pequeño negocio, empecé con una mesa, con un pequeño cantidad de macacos en ese entonces que no era como el nombre tan común, pero ahora es tan común que la gente venga a pedir macacos. Entonces desde el 5 de febrero hemos arrancado y de hecho a Ace se le ha hecho un vicio. True. What can I say? I, I love this. How do you make one of these? Like, don't, don't tell us the secret ingredients, but like, what is the process? El proceso básicamente es usar ingredientes de alta calidad, como son siempre los ingredientes frescos. Es muy importante que esté fresco. Aquí nunca te vamos a vender algo del día de ayer. Siempre es algo que acabamos de preparar al día. Para prepararlo necesitamos carne, frijol, para hacer básicamente el chile. Pero hay que saber cómo hacerlo. Entonces nosotros tenemos nuestra receta secreta para preparar el chile. No creo que sea fácil porque para que lo haga así de delicioso, la verdad que otro next level. Love it, I love it, I love it. Siempre hay que hacer las cosas con amor, porque las cosas que haces con amor las haces bien, porque si las hago con coraje no va a salir igual. Es verdad, true, true. Gotta do things with love, man. I tend to put some extra sauce. Which one is the least spicy? Menos. Ah, de menos a más en este orden, pero como te das cuenta que esta es la menos picante, es la que la gente elige más siempre. Entonces por eso ya no hay. Este es intermedio, que es el jalapeño, y la más fuerte, que es la de habanero. I'll take intermediate. Woo! I need to try it now. Now. Y esto que tenemos aquí es lo más fuerte. Son habaneros. If you're in Puerto Viejo, then one of the things that you definitely have to try these macacos. And we still got a lot more things to try out, so stay tuned. Vengan y macaquense. Ya saben, muchas gracias Ace por venir. Ella aparte es un cliente frecuente, entonces casi viene todos los días. Entonces... I wish I could come every day, man. I wish. <laughs> so now we're at our next destination, and here we have a wild assortment of different treats, snacks, common foods that you have here when you go out on the street. I have a few that I prefer, but he has some that he wants to talk about as well. Esto es un mix. Todo un poquito. Aquí encontramos lo que vendría a ser la tortilla de yuca, que en la mañana lo mencionamos, pero que lo pudimos conseguir aquí. Este es el famoso muchín de queso, que esto también está hecho a base de yuca, pero este es frito. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Este es hornado. Tenemos lo que vendría a ser el famoso pastelillo, esto también es frito y tendría por dentro lo que es un relleno dulce. El famoso corviche lo podemos encontrar eh, de dos maneras, uno es frito, en este caso este es hornado, por eso se lo ve como un poco reseco, aunque cualquiera de las dos formas es súper delicioso. Ahora, esto de aquí es bastante común, esto también está frito, son los famosos deditos de queso, se suelen encontrar de mortadela también. Esto te lo encuentras bastante fuera de los colegios, escuelas, al igual que esto de aquí, que son las bolitas de carne. Ah, y esto de aquí, 
Esto solamente lo encuentras aquí en Ecuador. Es un, un granizado tipo yogur con una mermelada encima. Uy, se derramó, se pasa nada. Que es demasiado delicioso. Si alguna vez tienen la oportunidad de venir a Ecuador, prueben esto. Sí o sí, recomendado. We are literally at the most street food possible. Literalmente estamos en la calle. Yeah, we're literally on a sidewalk at the street. This is a very popular street. Well, it used to be more popular before. Esta calle antes era mucho más popular. Sí, This is the Periodista. So now we're here to try empanadas. Lo más tradicional de esta tierra y callejera a la vez. The fillings are different depending on which empanadas you buy. For example, we have one that's cheese and one that's meat. I'm gonna go for the meat filled one. The ones that we're eating here, they're fried. But there are some places that sell baked empanadas, but it is not the common thing to see around here. Se preguntarán por qué estamos sentados en la calle. Básicamente, las mesas están llenas. Cuchara ni san cuchara. Esta es con la mano. Because it's hot, I don't want to grab it with my hand, but mm. you do normally eat this with your hands. Ironically, we're doing what I normally don't recommend to do recording here out on the street um, but this is an exception because of this video i do it for you so if you respect that please subscribe to the channel otra cosa es que esta no es la forma habitual de encontrar una empanada mm -hmm. esto que está goteando es el queso esta es como si fuera un, en forma de pastelillo pero mm -hmm. empanada Empanadas normally aren't this round uh -huh. no son tan redondas sino no, realmente como una media luna mm -hmm. cuánto costó ¿Cuánto es lo típico que encuentras una empanada? O sea, lo, entre lo más barato. 50. 50 cents. Juré que en la universidad antes vendían como a 25 o 35 centavos afuera de la U. Antes, bien dicho. Todo ha subido, el plátano ha subido, el queso ha subido, toda la materia prima ha subido bastante. Así que, igual, 75 centavos para esta empanada que trae bastante queso, bastante carne, está muy bien pagada. So the empanadas are great, but there's still one more place we have to go to. Another street food, you'll see what it is. But it's awesome. That's all you need to know for now. So let's go. El final de la ruta ha llegado y esta es nuestra última parada. Y para cerrar con broche de oro. Bienvenidos a Gonzos Chuzos. The best Chuzos in Puerto Viejo. Chuzos de Puerto Viejo. And of course, made by the best person around. Everyone knows him, everyone loves him on this channel. My dad. There's a lot of places here in Puerto Viejo that sell Chuzos. You can find them at fairs, outside of certain events. But these Chuzos are the best ones you will taste no matter where you go. Because my dad makes them with high quality products and with a lot of care and dedication. Now when it comes to the totals, we're going to look at this primarily in two different ways. First, we'll look at the group totals and then we'll look at the individual totals. If we look at the group total for the first day, it was $20. The group total for the second day in the morning was $14.10. Then the group total for the second day at night was $19.40. When you add all of this up, you get a total of $53.50 spent between the three days as a group or duo. You could of course subtract the $5 from gas if you're only focusing on food expenses and that would total up to $48.50. If we look at the individual totals, in other words, the totals based on the food I ate or ordered, then for the first day, I would have spent $10.75. On the second day, in the morning, I would have spent $9.80. And on the second day at night, I would have spent $8.90. All this making my individual total be $29.95. This, of course, could be reduced to $24.95 if I remove the expense for gas. 
And for anyone wondering what this would look like if you had to transport yourself in a bus, then it could cost you around four to five dollars, similarly to the motorcycle expense, but you'd have to be a bit more wary of the time since bus schedules, you know? And if you were to take taxis, it could cost you anywhere from 20 to 30 dollars to do the whole route we did since some places were farther than others and there were a total of 10 different places we went to. Not adding, of course, leaving and going back home. Now I know all of this looks like a lot to spend on street food in Ecuador, but realistically, you wouldn't go out and order as much food as we did, nor would you go out to eat so consecutively in the same day or even separate days. Going out to eat is a very extra expense, unless you can't cook. But even then, you'd probably go for cheaper foods. So one thing that you have to note about all the food that we talked about here today is that you can actually find it around all of Ecuador. Realistically, you could find each food, the bolón, the pan bidón, corviche, and cebollado, anywhere you go in Ecuador. But the problem is that depending on where you go, it's not as recommended to eat as if you were eating it in a different place. For example, we have these chuzos <laughs> that you can literally only find here because my dad makes them and they're like gourmet level. So you're only gonna find them here. But looking at it in other foods, like in cebollado, you always hear the typical complaint from people that they go to the highlands and the encebollado is terrible because they know what it tastes like in the coast. So my recommendation definitely is to eat the food in the best place possible. For the most part, that's always gonna be the coast for coastal food, but there are highland foods that are highlighted over there. Las comidas de la sierra que son preferibles en la sierra serían? Um, las fritadas son muy buenas. Algo bastante tradicional también son la colada morada, las panes hechas de guagua. E incluso hasta los pollos asados son muy buenos. Todo lo que es frito y asado ya es excelente. Pero si nos transportamos a donde o tenemos la, ¿dónde es la mejor comida de Ecuador? Netamente la costa. Tienes un sinnúmero de platos muy deliciosos. La costa siempre va a ser el punto donde vas a tener la mejor comida ecuatoriana. Cabe recalcar que La ruta que nosotros hemos hecho es netamente en nuestra ciudad, en nuestra región, que somos de la cuesta, obviamente. En la provincia de Manaví, en la ciudad de aquí de Puerto Viejo. La ruta gastronómica es muy extensa, la ruta de la calle es meramente inmensa. Ahora, si les interesó mucho este video, este contenido, nos gustaría que abajo en los comentarios escriban, ¿saben qué? Nos gustó mucho, queremos una segunda parte. Sigan apoyando este contenido y pues cuando él diga, ¿sabes qué? Vamos a grabar la segunda parte, pues aquí estaremos nuevamente, continuando con la ruta gastronómica de la comida callejera. Let's do it. If you guys really are interested in that, leave a comment down below. And if you need to know or if you want to know more things about Ecuador's food that you probably didn't know about, you should definitely check out this video next.